Today's deck profile is about three years too late, but however, because there's no actual events and as a result there's no ban list, this deck is still more crazier than ever. So today we're gonna look at Dragonoid Maximus. One of the most insane cards we've ever gotten in the Bakugan reboot was Dragonoid Maximus. It was the capstone toy to the first season and was hyped as all hell. Have you seen how built up and awesome he was in the show? Of course, the toy was wicked awesome and the card that came with it, oh boy, that was a whole other can of Alaskan bullworms. Dragonoid Maximus is a 10 cost evo that evolves from only from the Titan Dragonoid toy that comes with the Dragonoid Maximus toy. It is also 2510 damage with a very powerful game winning effect, and I mean literally game winning. If you control Dan Kuzo, Winton Styles, and Leah Venegas, the three heroes specifically from Battle Brawlers, you win the game. If all four are on the field at the same time, you Exodia your opponent. Dragonoid Maximus is the first and currently only card to ever have this instant win condition. It is insane to me how Spin Master thought to put this in a $45 toy set. When you can't pull this from a pack or was the toy ever reprinted or re-released, the Dragonoid Maximus capstone you can't even find anymore and you needed to buy three of them to get a playset. So secondary market sellers rejoice in the value and I just feel sorry for the people that started the game really late. Although I do have to interject something, if you live outside of the US, like you live in Canada or uh, Australia or something like that, and you get the Dragonoid Maximus toy, it comes with a playset of three because it all three cards actually come with different languages and it has been confirmed by Bakugan themselves that all three play sets are actually playable in the deck so you can't actually add them as long as you have the actual translation so yeah the US got screwed there huh now, that's not to say that Dragonoid Maximus is totally busted though, there are some weaknesses that it has. Dragonoid Maximus can be pretty slow to set up because you require a total of 4 cards to get into play. Even then, there is no guarantee that you will achieve it because of the life decking in this game. Your heroes might end up in the drop zone before you get the setup in your hand. Dragonoid Maximus and its setup potentially takes up 30% of your overall deck, which doesn't leave you with much options and a lot of the options you have are going to be dedicated to bringing out Dragonoid Maximus' win condition faster, all while your opponent is going to slowly chip away at your life. And there is little to no protection against it. Cards that destroy or control heroes as well as evil destruction cards are going to be very strong against this deck. Though the odds of you running into those are a little slim so that might not be a thing you have to worry about. Not to mention since you need Dan, Winton, and Leah in your deck, it has to be specifically a Pyrus, Ventus, and Chaos deck which can restrict your comfort options. Now, despite its flaws, Dragonoid Maximus can still have a strong showing, not always having to rely on the big guy, and that is depending on how you approach the deck. And the first step towards your path of annihilation is the Bakugan you use. The first one, obviously, is Pyrus Titan Dragonoid, which comes with the Dragonoid Maximus set, so no need to worry about hunting that there. Dragonoid Maximus will only evolve from this Bakugan specifically. No ifs, ands, buts about it. So you absolutely need this in your deck. But at 703, bringing Orange Shield and Green Fist, it's still not bad. For our Ventus Bakugan, Evolutions has blessed us with Platinum Blitz Fox. It's double Orange Shield 504 and on Orange Shield plus 1000 B power. This is actually probably the strongest Ventus Bakugan right now, being able to hit at best 1900 B power in total on cores alone. This is an insane monster with loads of power creeps, so you won't have to worry too much about fighting. And finally for Chaos, we're using Chaos Ultra Fennica, an 802 with Orange Shield and Green Fist. Fennica's Ultra toy actually is able to pick up two cores when it lands on its back, and if you get the technique right and roll it the opposite way of how you are supposed to roll it, you will likely get that double core and hit big numbers. So yeah, these three are the lineup, but you can use any other two Ventus and Chaos Bakugan you want, it's up to you. Now for the cards, I'll just skip ahead to the mandatory cards. We're using three Dragonoid Maximus, three Dan Kuzo, two Leah Venegas, and two Winton Styles. Now we're using three Dans because Dan is able to top deck into the other two heroes as the game goes on, so it's always best to try and guarantee him coming onto the field as best you can. If you have three on the field, that's more than awesome. Leah and Winton is a decent run two of because Leah is an expensive 10 cost and Winton might end up energizing your heroes. So try to prioritize Dan so you can top deck into Max his pieces without paying the 10 cost and if you top deck Leah, you can use her effect to get Winton and immediately have your 3 heroes set up. Next, we're running 3 Leahs from Age of Auralis. Her effect is when you open a Bakugan, look at top 3 and if one of them is a hero, you can play it for free. So she's a good way to get your heroes out. 
they did do a ruling clarification out for this. If Leah makes you look at top three, you have to put those top three cards back on top in the order you saw them, which I find very weird because you usually in card games, you either put them on bottom or reshuffle your deck, but whatever. Next, we got two Diamond Fennica Ultra. She's a seven cost 2210 Evo, so if you need to win with something in case Dragonroid Maximus fails, then you at least have a backup. Next up, we're running three Super Fuel. One costs reroll, and if you open, next card you play, it costs three less. So you can use this to help make your heroes cheaper, or you can use this and trigger your heroes on the field because their effects are whenever you open a Bakugan. It's a good way to discount cards in your hand or trigger Dan or Winton. Next is two Divine Intervention. Four costs reroll, and if you land, you can play an Evo for free. I shouldn't have to tell you that you can get Dragonroid Maximus out for free with this, and you can also trigger your heroes on reroll. Next, three quick fires. Obviously, for re rolling in case you miss or to trigger Dan or Winton and burn your opponent in the process. Next up, three, the sky's him. One cost, look at top three cards, put them back on top in any order, and if you're holding more cores, draw a card. Since you're using high B power Bakugan and you got a double core Bakugan like Fennica on your team, you can pull this off easily. Rearranging your deck can help you prepare for the next turn to get Dragon and Maximus out or using Dan's ability. Next we got 3 Air Zero, a 2 cost action card version of Dan. If you can chance out your heroes or Dragon and Maximus, then why not use it? Especially after you use Sky's Him. If you know what the top of your deck is, you can play this as soon as next turn starts. Next, we're running two Song of Fire for three cost plus five energy to your energy pool. So you can use this energy to get out Dan and Winton, make Leah and Dragon and Maximus half off. It's good to use energy ramping in this deck since a lot of cards turn out pretty expensive. Next is two Moxify Cubble Beam. One cost minus 500, might as well put up some sort of a fight if things get sticky. Next, three Lights Courage. Two cost plus 400 on Domination plus 800. Again, you will probably need the reserve power in case you get in trouble. Now for flips, we're using two Luck Aura. Four cost, play a card from your hand for free. If you sung a fire and you did nothing with it, you can use this to get your stuff out for the next turn. You can use this to get Leah or Maximus out for a four cost, it can come in handy. The downside is it doesn't stop attack, so be careful with it. And finally, two Tiger Reflex. Four costs, stop non-Ventus, and Turbo, it's free. If you have Winton on the field, you can probably get the Turbo off, especially if you keep ramping with all the rerolls you got. So yes, this is practically what the deck looks like, and this is the overall design of your deck. As you can see, there is a lot of reroll cards, primarily to take advantage of the wording of when this Bakugan opens. So you can recycle abilities like Dan and Leo to help you get your Dragon and Maximus combo off for Exodia win. Now, there are some things that I can recommend you can fit into this deck. One of them is another hero card that won't count towards Maximus, and that is Heostrata. At a 3 cost, your hero cards cost 2 less to play, so if you happen to have your heroes in hand, Strata can make it a lot easier for you to get them out. If you happen to get all the playset of Strata out onto the field, the discount stacks, so you can play Dan and Winston for free, or Leah for 4. An action card that can be helpful in protecting your heroes and your evos is Honey Trap. At just one cost, not only does this draw you a card, but your evos and heroes can't be destroyed this turn. However, this does not stop control or bouncing abilities, but this can still be a good insurance to protect your heroes and Maximus. Finally, a few hero cards you can add to the deck are ones you probably won't be able to find too often because they're blind box exclusives. It's Dan Frenzy Brawler, Leah Common Collected, and Winton Supercharged. Now bear in mind these three are not going to count towards Dragonroid Maximus, however they are very good for playing the deck passively. Dan Frenzy Brawler is an 8 cost plus 500 B power to your Bakugan and plus 5 to your Bakugan attacks, so Dan can be helpful in case you're failed Maximus. Leah Common Collected, as long as long as she's on the field, you can only take a maximum of 5 damage from Bakugan attacks and won't have to worry about stuff like Darkfire Defense or Might Mac. And Winton Supercharge turns all of your action cards into energy, which can help ramp Maximus. All of these heroes work very well with Honey Trap, so you can use their Insta Brawl abilities to get them out faster, and at the end of turn, use Honey Trap to stop them from being destroyed. But yeah, these are just friendly recommendations. Dragonlet Maximus is already a base card on its own, and the design of this deck is already made in a way to help get its win con out quickly. Use this deck profile as a stepping stone to help you design your own deck so you can blast your opponents to oblivion. 
But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was my deck profile for Dragonite Maximus. It's still a very insane card, and because it's not available anymore, I got a feeling when events actually take up again and we get an official ban list by Spin Master, this might end up getting hit because of the lack of availability. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and what suggestions you might have for your own Dragonite Maximus deck. Support Baku Talk by pressing the thumbs up and give us a subscribe for more awesome Bakugan content. I've been Haru Ren, and thank God for Rapid Fire. Bye!